criminals. <laughs> Can you even? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 good girls moments. I mean, it's literally paper. You can't sign people up for criminal activity like it's a bake sale. It's wrapping paper. It's just wrapping paper. Quite a situation we got. Always. Always. For this list, we'll be looking at significant points from the crime comedy drama that had us handing over our attention, joining in on the main character's mischief, and perceiving the leading ladies as anything but good girls. This video will reveal several of the series' monumental milestones, so this is your spoiler warning. Be sure to let us know in the comments which good girls scenario robbed you of expectations and had you shook. Number 10. Dean Bolin Gets Arrested – Big Kahuna Beth Bolin's not-so-faithful husband, Dean, appears to have his act together in Season 4. We are all about the flow here at Bolin Bubbles. However, their new business, Bolin Bubbles, becomes the FBI's focal point for a criminal investigation in Season 4's second episode, Big Kahuna. Detective Phoebe has eyed Beth, Ruby, and Annie since Season 3. Just as Manny Montana's Rio mentioned from the very beginning, Phoebe's boss, Dave, does not suspect the main ladies as their guy. Posing as a representative from large hot tub retailer Big Kahuna, Dave pulls out all the stops to sniff through Bolin's books for any illegal activity. What about you? It must be hard having to answer to your lady. Oh, dang. <laughs> I don't answer my lady, she just kind of helps out. You no, know, it seems like she does a little more than that. Christina Hendricks' character does her best to stall, however that doesn't stop Dean from winding up in the big kahuna's handcuffs at the end of this stunning moment. I'm sorry. What do you mean you're sorry? Wait, what's going on? Dean Bolin? Yeah? Mr. Bolin, you're under arrest. Number 9. Marion Peterson Hides Leslie Boomer Peterson, Jeff Leslie Boomer Peterson's loving grandmother Marion will do anything for him. But Leslie is a true gentleman. Huh. He is definitely something. <laughs> and she does. After his fiance Mary Pat accidentally runs Boomer over with her vehicle in an earlier episode of season two, we assume that the slimy grocery manager is dead. Later that same season, Annie Marks begins helping Marion out with her chores. During this time, she interrogates her on Boomer's whereabouts. At one point, Marion questions why her grandson would abandon her if he were alive. So he would let me cry myself to sleep for months without even so much as a phone call? To our disappointment, an argument occurs, and the two seemingly decide to end their relationship. Just as Annie returns to give back her key, we are presented with a not-so-innocent Marion, caught red-handed, helping Boomer down her attic stairs. I thought you might want your key back. Annie Bonetti. Number 8. Rio Sends a Message Oh Zhu. While under the impression that Rio is deceased, the trio decides to maintain the counterfeit business he introduced them to. In the first episode of Season 3, the women con Beth's new graphic designer colleague Lucy into crafting a $10 build template for their business. We need you to design the money that we'll bet with. I was thinking something simple, like tens. Look. I'm really good at what I do, and if it got into the wrong hands, you know, it's kind of like counterfeit. Unfortunately, as we see later that season, this plate is short-lived as a jealous Dean sabotages it. Being the micromanager that he is, Rio has been overseeing this entire situation. Posing as a fake customer, Rio seeks Lucy's services in hopes of replacing his current employees. I'd really like to get rid of the person I'm using now. Really? Yeah, not so reliable. Well, it won't happen on my watch. <laughs> Just let me know if I can help. Actually, Lucy, I think you can. Despite offering the kidnapped Lucy false hope for her cooperation, Rio's goons ultimately take the innocent woman's life, sending a scarring message to the main characters. I've been doing this a long time. Only way someone like you gets hurt is if you talk. You're not gonna talk, right? No. I got your word? It would cross my heart. 
And you'll never see me again. Number seven. Beth Bolin pretends to be pregnant. Egg roll. Manny Montana's Rio is out for blood after surviving his near-death experience brought on by Beth in the very last episode of season two. Just when Beth believes all her troubles are over, Rio unexpectedly rises up from the grave. Beth is floored when she sees her resurrected boss sit next to her in the final scene of season three's second episode. I think you might need that drink, huh? Having a few bones to pick with her, Rio explains the pandemonium she caused on his body in the follow-up episode. Lung. Spleen. Shoulder. But before he can slaughter their relationship, she calculatedly blurts out that she is with child. Let's get this over with. What do you say? I'm pregnant. To our surprise, Beth's faux pregnancy defense works and the suburban mother lives on to see another day. Number six, another day, another robbery. Vegas, baby. In the seventh episode of season three, Lucy's boyfriend Max is saddened and vengeful after he learns the truth behind her disappearance. He wants to order a hit on Rio and discloses to the main ladies that his cousin, an ex-Navy SEAL, would take the job for a fee of $30,000. I've got a cousin. He's a former Navy SEAL. You mean like a, he'll do it. How much? Going rate is 30. Grand? He won't miss. At first, the three head over to JT, their connection at a loan office, requesting funds for the bounty. Although he rejects the loan, JT does offer to help the women revert to their old ways. I might be able to help y'all after all. Really? Is there a different kind of loan? The foursome take their fundraiser over to a convenience store where their heist fails miserably. JT gets spooked and abandons ship while Retta's Ruby Hill takes one for the team. Is everyone okay? No. Number five, Beth Boland double crosses her boss, Dave. After raising the bounty, the trio meets with Max's ex-Navy SEAL cousin, Troy, who is no longer equipped for the job. Do you feel like it's something that you're capable of? If I'm being totally honest here, I might not have what it takes. He connects them with sharpshooter Mr. Fitzpatrick, who originally agrees to their request in season three, but backpedals when he develops feelings for Beth in the following season. It's been a misunderstanding. Really? Because you have made it very clear that this is exactly what I need to do. Not like this. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I supposed to enjoy it? Maybe fall in love with you? To top it off, Dave from the Secret Service offers the ladies immunity in exchange for Rio. In hopes of exterminating the problem, Beth slides a picture of what is deemed to be Dave to Rio. On the same night Fitzpatrick disobeys Beth's request to abort the mission, Rio infiltrates the hitman's lair, shooting him before he can get shot himself. Later, Dave. In this precise moment, we learn that Beth both double-crossed her superior and still leaves immunity on the table. Number four, Beth attempts to outsmart Rio, King. This right here, that's your problem. Take care of it. In season two's impetuous finale, Beth is abruptly kidnapped while outside of her home and winds up in Rio's apartment. Rio tests Beth's loyalty by placing her in a compromising position. He has cowardly tied up Agent Turner and does his best to manipulate Beth into ironing out the kinks in their business. Astonishingly, Beth hasn't gone completely over to the dark side yet. Aiming the piece of metal in her hands at her biggest problem, Beth remarkably turns on Rio. You think he's my problem? So put on your big girl panties and take care of him. He's not my problem. This immoral decision has Beth thinking that all of her problems have now been solved. But after Beth flees, Agent Turner realizes that Rio is still alive and proposes to him an ultimatum that is to die for. You know this means you're gonna owe me, right? Number three, Beth and Rio become more than business partners. Pick your poison. 
In the fifth episode of season one, we can feel chemistry between the two alphas as Beth and Rio playfully think of an excuse to explain their relationship to the FBI. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Tell them we're making love. I, how do I even say that? <laughs> You'll think of something. Make me sound good, though, yeah? But before crossing the line with her boss, Beth should have taken the saying, don't mix business with pleasure, into account. In fact, she does the exact opposite. Upset about Dean rejecting her idea about his car dealership, Beth's interest in her husband starts to diminish, and things really take a turn in the second season. We are a great team. Why is that? Because we both have our own, you know, superpower. Why would you want to wreck that? Noticing her ruggedly handsome employer seated at the same bar as her and her husband, Beth makes the move to take their relationship to a new level. Rio doesn't only follow her to the bathroom, but he also gives her the attention she desires. Number 2. Beth Boland, Annie Marks, and Ruby Hill hold up fine and frugal. Pilot. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a robbery! The inciting incident of the series occurs in the pilot when desperate times call for desperate measures. As all three of the suburban housewives are suffering from financial hardships in the very first episode, Beth, Ruby, and Annie find themselves frantic to provide for their families. We just do it once, and we get some money. Oh, God. You get to help your little girl, and you get to take care of this custody thing, and I get to save my family. Suited up in ski masks and strapped with their children's hardware, they take matters into their own hands. They target Fine and Frugal, which is the grocery store that employed Annie at the time. We robbed a grocery store. <laughs> we totally did. And we actually got away with it. <laughs> like some smooth criminals. <laughs> <laughs> Miraculously, their wrongdoing was even a success albeit not without future consequences, as the women pocketed a colossal $500,000. The heist was so fruitful that when they fell on hard times again, the ladies hit up the same grocery store for good luck a few episodes later. Nobody knows! This is a robbery! We're gonna make this quick and easy! Do what we say and nobody gets hurt! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Taking out the trash. You have reached the voicemail of Leslie Peterson. The trio dispose of Boomer's body. So on three. Okay. Final answer. Okay. Okay. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Being a supportive mother, Adam Bomb. Annie always makes time to hear her child out. Are people like pulling your pants down? They want to know what I am. So no big deal. We'll buy you some belts. Beth keeps their business afloat. Synergy. The Bolins purchase a hot tub retailer as their new front. We already agreed on a number. Well, yeah, but that doesn't seem fair. I mean, why would I pay that much when it's just an empty showroom? Special delivery. Nana. The ladies pick up Boomer for Rio. Well, where do we go? Let's get going. Phoebe Donegan attempts to nail the good girls. Synergy. The detective befriends the women. Geez, you gotta check tens now? You never know what's out there. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the ladies join forces with the enemy, Atom Bomb. Oh, so you think you could pick and choose what you want to do and when you want to do it? She thought it would be like driving for Uber. With their newfound fascination for a life of crime, Beth, Annie, and Ruby question whether or not they want to return to their regular cookie-cutter lifestyles in the first season's fourth episode. They've acquired a taste for this unfamiliar scene and devise a plan to wash Rio's money through a big box store refunding scam. We have a business proposition. Oh, you guys didn't hit me up to do brunch? 
In this moment, it is both extremely entertaining and haunting how natural their criminal behavior becomes. Although slightly apprehensive at first, Ryo agrees to participate in the ladies' proposition, and this is the beginning of their business relationship. With the women's good girl images serving as the perfect cover-up for his bad boy crookedness, Ryo will soon realize that he's hit the jackpot. I'll give it a try. We're not here to try, we're here to win, bitch. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.